Hi guys, this is Raul from Simple Wi-Fi, and in this video we're going to be covering how to configure your Pi-Fi to grab a signal from a hotspot, whether that be your home or an office or a campground, and then feed it down to the included router or the router that you may already have inside the second location so that it can grab this signal and feed it into a second router so that multiple devices can connect to the internet. Okay, so this video uh, assumes that you've already set up your antenna and your repeater outside and all your cables are run. So uh, you've already gone through steps one through six <clears throat> and now you're getting ready to power up on step seven. Uh, just to quickly touch on the three important things that are, uh, that are needed in order to have a successful long range Wi-Fi link. And that is your antenna needs to be high. You need to have a uh, very good line of sight so no obstructions in the way and of course you need to have access to the signal so getting back into it now we're at step 8 and uh, we're gonna use either a computer a tablet or a mobile phone to connect to the uh, Wi-Fi signal that's coming from the router that was included in your kit so we are going to connect to the router that doesn't have internet right now, but you want to have internet after you set up the Pi-Fi. So this is a little bit of a tricky uh, moment. A lot of times people get confused because, oh, uh, you know, this doesn't have internet. Why, how am I gonna access to Pi-Fi? You're creating a network between your Pi-Fi and your router so that once you connect to the router through your, your wireless device, you will only be able to access the website that is the configuration page, page four, the PiFi. So if we're looking at my available networks here, I have this Netis labeled as Netis Connect Me to PiFi. Let's assume this is the one that's included in the kit or the one that you already have and you want to connect to the PiFi. So this is hardwired to the PiFi outside, which is then pointing at the base station. So for this situation, I'm going to connect to here. I'm going to put my password, which was the default password, uh, password. You can just say yes. And the computer is going to be working for a while. It's going to recognize that there is no internet. You're going to be connected. And the same thing will happen with your phone. If you're doing this over a mobile phone, uh, it does help to go into airplane mode so that you can disconnect from your cell network. Uh, otherwise, when you're trying to connect to the PiFi through the website that we provide, the 192.168.89.1 uh, on your mobile phone, if you have your LTE service up, it will try to access that page through the LTE network and it won't work. So just the best way to do it is to get on airplane mode and then try to connect uh, to the Wi-Fi network. So you can see I have no internet, but I'm secured, okay? Uh, don't worry about the no internet. That's that's what we want right now. Uh, we're going to go to open an, any browser, uh, anything, uh, and by anything I mean only either Firefox or Chrome, no Fire, uh, no uh, Windows uh, Internet Explorer, okay? So then we're going to type in 192.168.89.1, and this is the interface for configuring your Pi-Fi. So, up here I've got the router that I connected to and this will typically always be your strongest network just because it's always going to be closer to your Pi-Fi and your antenna. Don't ever connect to this. Uh, it's showing you the, the Pi-Fi software is showing you everything that's available but what we want is connect to the base station and in this case for this example I have another Netis uh, that I left with the uh, standard SSID uh, stock one and we're going to connect to this. So this has internet. These are other networks in the area. Uh, I'm pointing a directional right at this uh, router. So I'm going to just go ahead and click on it. And it's going to ask me for a key. If you didn't have a password if you're, or you don't have a password on your base station, uh, it will just connect, start connecting automatically. But in this case, it's password again. And the system starts to uh, connect to it. So we want to get three check marks or three yeses. It's going to be checking IP, uh, it's going to be checking internet, and then internet detected. So right now I've got a yes, yes, yes. I'm connected to my base station. So I can go to simplewifi.com and now I'm browsing the internet. 
So uh, I'm using this router with an antenna and the PiFi to connect to the base station, which is over here. So uh, to jump into the signal levels, minus 36, minus 31, these are fantastic signal levels just because we are very close to the uh, the antenna and it's, I'm using a directional. Uh, I'm sorry, we're very close to the router and I'm using a directional. So uh, these are uh, very, very ideal conditions and unrealistic over a long range link. Most of the time you might see something in this area if you're very far away or you have obstructions, but basically anything that's minus uh, 70 or below uh, the cl or higher, the closer you get to zero, the better. So the, better, the closer this negative number gets to zero, the stronger the signal. You want to get this as high as, as, high as possible. So minus 70, minus 75, you're in usable internet range. This might be a little spotty. I might recommend strong, uh, switching to a uh, stronger antenna or aiming the antenna better. If we jump over to the stats section, uh, this is the stats for the signal that we're connected to. So remember, this was my base station. And it's giving me in real time what my signal strength is. And it, it goes up and down, but in general, it averages out to you know what you're seeing on the, in the scan page. And this will give you a lot of information in terms of when you're trying to aim it. Uh, as you're aiming the antenna, this will change in real time. So uh, let's say you're using a directional panel to aim better to the base station. You can connect to the network go to the stats page and then aim and you will see this fluctuate up and down. So it's a very useful tool. Um, your favorites, so this is for people who are mobile, RV guys, that sort of thing. You can go back to here. Uh, let's say uh, I'm connected to my base station. So I can favorite this. And now every time I power up my PiFi and I get back to the same campsite that I was before. So let's say I go driving around town or to another campsite and I return back to a location that I uh, my PiFi recognizes, it will automatically connect to the signal and uh, you won't have to go through this whole process again. So that's a very nice feature that uh, helps RV, uh, RV guys and, and gals to be able to uh, seamlessly just connect to networks from far away after returning uh, to a new campsite, or to a, a past campsite. And in your settings, uh, you have a firewall. Typically, I would always recommend to leave that on. Uh, if you ever need to reboot the system, so a good power cycle most of the time fixes any hiccups that happen. Uh, hiccups will typically be from the base station side. Uh, not to get too technical, but uh, you know, uh, uh, some refreshes need to be done. Uh, if you ever have a hiccup, the reboot helps if you don't just fit on, uh, physically disconnect the power from the router and the PiFi. Uh, and this just gives you some uh, stats, you know, some, some your IP address, your Mac, your net, met, your net mask, and that sort of thing. Um, upgrade firmware. From time to time, we will contact you if there's ever a uh, firmware upgrade available, or we will post it on our website. For the most part, you can just leave this as is. and. Uh, and you'll be good to go. Of course, Simple Wi-Fi is always here to help. So our support phone number and our hours are available up top. Uh, you can always contact us, 305-798-8505, and you can talk to one of our agents. Or uh, you can send us an email or chat us on the website. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, of course, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.